So welcome to this new session. We are going to continue with our discussion on uh, pricing and how does it impact demand. But now we are going to take a different look at it. Now we are going to look at it from the optimization perspective. So uh, uh, from the demand response curve, we have seen that uh, uh, as the price changes, the demand for a particular product also changes. Now to estimate this relationship, we try to fit a linear curve and then we said that uh, there is a linear, a linear relationship between price and demand. Then we saw the constant elasticity curve where the relationship between price and demand was kind of non-linear because we wanted to keep the elasticity constant because in a linear relationship when the price and the demand relationship is linear, the elasticity does not remain constant, elasticity keeps changing, elasticity actually uh, increases. So, uh, uh, in a constant elasticity curve, uh, we keep the elasticity constant, but uh, the relationship between price and demand becomes non-linear. But essentially, a demand response curve tells you that you offer different prices in the market, market is going to react by realizing different values of the demand. Now, for any uh, business, for any retailer, the then decision is, yes, market is going to react to my price with a corresponding realized demand, what should be the price that I offer in the market then? So uh, I know that if I offer a price of 3 rupees, there is going to be certain demand. If I offer the price of 10 rupees, there is going to be certain demand. Uh, if I offer a price of 29 rupees, there is going to be certain demand. So the question becomes, what is the optimal price to be offered in the market? So let us take an optimization view to this. But uh, what we are going to discuss in the next uh, uh, slide, next few slides is, what is your objective? What do you mean by optimal prices? The prices are going to be optimized based on what objective do you set for yourself. Now, if the objective is to maximize your revenue, there is going to be certain price that may turn out to be optimal. And what we are going to also show is that if the objective changes, if the objective is changed to let us say profit maximization instead of revenue maximization, the optimal price also changes. This looks kind of counterintuitive, but this is what we intend to show in this session. So let us go back to our discussion on price demand curve. Uh, uh, so the demand response curve, right? Uh, demand response curve, if you recall, uh, we saw different uh, relationship, linear relationship, constant elasticity relationship. So let us for now take the uh, linear relationship between price and demand, right? Linear relationship between price and demand. Now, just to get our memories jogged up, let us go back to that Excel sheet. Let us go back to that Excel sheet where we had a linear relationship between price and demand. So, let me uh, show you that, uh, let me show you that. Uh, so, if you recall, this was our, uh, this was our, uh, this was our relationship and then we plotted a straight line. So, this was data analysis. Let us not even do that. Let me directly go here. And this is what we did. We actually drew a linear trend line, right? Linear trend line. So this was the uh, this was the demand. X axis is the price. And then I ask Excel to plot a linear trend line, right? A linear trend line uh, with a corresponding uh, linear relationship, right? So this was the linear relationship. So, uh, if you recall, our y-intercept was 5842.8 and the slope was negative 157.7. How did we interpret these values? We said that uh, what is 5842? 5842 in the mathematical term, it is y-intercept. Now, what is y-intercept? Y-intercept is the value of y when x is equal to 0. What does it mean to our demand response curve? In On the x-axis, we have price. So, uh, when price is 0, essentially when we are selling our product at no price at all. So essentially, we are telling the customer, here are some uh, here are some goods lying around. If you want to pick a product and go home, just pick a product and go home. You don't have to pay anything. Prices are zero. So when the prices are zero, how many people do we expect to show up and collect the product? We expect the demand for this product to be 5842, 5842. This is the this is the these are the number of goods that will be sold 
are not sold that will be taken away by the customers even when the price is zero. So this is called the total market size 5842 is the total market size. You do not expect anything more than this right I mean the best you can do is give the product away for free that is what that is all you are doing. So uh, when the when the products are given away for free the total number of products that are taken by the customer is 5842. What is 157.7 that is the slope. If you increase the price of this product by 1 rupee the demand is going to drop by 157 units that is the interpretation of the slope. We also interpreted uh, R squared if you recall when we discussed regression but right now the linear, re linear equation is what I wish to take away from here right. So this is just to jog your memory. Let us go back to our optimization discussion right. So let us let us recall our linear relationship between price and demand. The relationship was of the type uh, uh, was of the type like this demand is D naught plus M into P, uh, M into P where D naught was the market size right the total market size total demand when price is equal to 0 and M was the slope M was the slope right. So now changing the price uh, if you uh, if different prices are offered in the market different demand will be realized different demand will be realized right that is what we mean. So uh, from our uh, uh, data uh, now we can uh, recall the equation as uh, demand to be 5842.8 minus the slope which was 157.7 into P right. So this was our uh, estimated linear relationship between demand and price. So this was our demand response curve when we assumed a linear relationship between the two. Now let us look at revenue. What is sales revenue? The revenue that I obtained by selling my product. So uh, how are sales revenues usually calculated? Sales revenue is very simple. How many products I sold multiplied by the price that I charge for that product. So let us say if my price offered uh, is uh, uh, if, if the prices for the product is 10 rupees, if I sell 10 products then obviously I generated a revenue of 100 which is 10 into 10 right. Uh, if my prices on the other hand was uh, 12 rupees uh, my, my demand was only 8 units. So 8 multiplied by 12 will be my sales revenues right. So sales revenue is generally calculated as demand multiplied by price right. So what is demand for our case? Uh, what is demand? Demand is given by this linear relationship right. Demand is given by this li linear relationship between uh, uh, demand and price right. So let us, let us substitute the equation for demand here right. So uh, demand is D into uh, D of P uh, demand as a function of price multiplied by price. If I assume a linear relationship uh, uh, then my demand equation my demand equation is uh, D naught uh, uh, D naught into M into P. So this is my demand equation. So this is my demand. This is my demand. If I simplify this this will become D naught into P uh, plus M into P squared where P will get inside right P into P will become P uh, M into P squared. So this is my uh, this is my equation for the revenue as a function of price revenue as a function of price is given by D naught into P plus M into P squared okay. For our uh, uh, numerical example for our numerical example the relationship is uh, revenue uh, which is a function of price is given by 5842.8 which is D naught into P minus 157.7 which is slope which is M into P squared. Now the question is if my objective is to maximize my revenue, I want to get as much revenue as I want as I can. What should be the price that I charge in the market? What should be the price of this commodity in the market? That is the question we are asking. So now let us maximize revenue. Let us maximize revenue. Right. So this is the revenue equation. Let us maximize it and try to get the optimal value of P that maximizes the revenue function. Okay, so uh, we might uh, so uh, let us let us find this optimal price. So and once again, uh, 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 revenue as a function of price. There is a this is a function of a single variable. Now, what do we generally do in these cases? We use what is called as first order necessary condition. First order necessary condition essentially means that we take a partial derivative of the revenue function with respect to p, and set that partial derivative equal to zero. Set that partial derivative equal to zero. Let us do that. What is the partial derivative of revenue with respect to P? This is the revenue. This is the revenue function right as a function of P. Let us take the partial derivative with respect to P here. 
partial derivative with respect to p will be uh, so here it was uh, uh, here it was uh, 5842 into p the partial derivative the p will go away uh, the partial derivative of p squared will be 2p right uh, so so this this becomes the partial derivative of revenue function with respect to price set it equal to 0 set it equal to 0 and you get price as 18.52 this is the optimal price if you wish to maximize the revenue okay so uh, this is the optimal price that maximizes the revenue ideally speaking you should also find the second derivative and make sure that our uh, revenue function is actually a concave curve right when you when you say that i am trying to maximize the revenue what i what you wish to do is this is the price y axis is the revenue y axis is the revenue and ideally you want to see something like this and then you say that this is where this is where at this price the prices uh, at this price the revenue seems to be maximized therefore this is my maximum value of revenue and this happens at this particular price point but to show that this is really the maximum value and not the minimum value because recall that even at the minimum point even at the minimum point let us do that with a different uh, color even when the revenue function is like this right uh, even when the revenue function is like this at this point the revenue is minimized at this p the revenue is minimized and even at this point the slope of the tangent is going to be zero slope of the tangent is zero at this point slope of the tangent is zero at this time uh, at this point so simply saying that uh, partial derivative equal to zero will not guarantee that you have found the revenue maximizing price you are either at this peak which is the maximum peak or you are at the trough which is the minimum point so you should take the par a second uh, derivative a uh, second derivative and make sure that your curve is a concave curve and not a convex curve right let us leave that discussion aside because that is a mathematical explanation what we are focusing on right now is trying to find the optimal price and we can we have just now shown that the optimal price turns out to be 18.52 okay 18.52 that maximizes the revenue okay